Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be covering an in-depth coverage of skin conditions that are associated with HIV. This video is going to include lots of clinical photographs because I think this is the best way to learn about this topic. In the video, we're going to start off by covering a definition of HIV. This is gonna be a brief outline. We'll then cover why recognition of skin disease is important in HIV. And then we'll move on in the third section of the video to cover the main focus, which is outlining some of the common and important types of skin disease affecting patients with HIV or AIDS. This is not going to be an exhaustive coverage, but I've included lots of helpful links in the description box of this video, which contain further details. So if you're interested in this and wish to do some further reading, please check those out. So first of all, what is HIV? Well, in a nutshell, HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. HIV is a retrovirus infection, and that causes an acquired immunodeficiency of the host via reduction in the number of CD4 T cells. This means that the body finds it much more difficult to fight off infections. And you'll see later on in this video why this is important because this can manifest in skin disease. Without appropriate treatment, a person with HIV can eventually progress to the advanced stage of infection, which is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is commonly referred to by its abbreviation AIDS. So who gets skin disease in HIV and why is this an important topic to be aware of? So the first thing to mention is that skin conditions are very common in HIV and around 90% of patients who are infected by HIV will develop some sort of skin condition. And there's an enormous range of skin conditions associated with HIV. And these generally increase in incidence with advancing HIV disease and declining immune function. Importantly, skin conditions can be some of the first signs of HIV infection. So if you're a doctor or healthcare professional and you suspect HIV based on a skin condition of your patient, it would be important to consent and test them for HIV because this could allow it to be detected earlier and ultimately for treatment to be commenced earlier, which will hopefully lead to better outcomes for the patient. So let's move on to the main part of this video now, which is what types of skin disease are associated with HIV. Broadly, it's good to take a systematic approach when thinking about the different types of skin disease. So we can start off by breaking it down into infectious causes on the one hand and non-infectious causes on the other. When we're thinking about infectious causes, we can further subdivide this down into fungal, bacterial, viral, and parasitic. So let's start off by first of all, looking at some of the fungal issues that could be associated with HIV infection. So there's a range of fungal infections that occur at different degrees of immunocompromise in HIV. These include tinea, which is commonly known as ringworm, and that can affect any area of the body. And you can see a photo on screen here. A patient may also have onychomycosis, which is a fungal infection of the nails. And they can also have candidal infections, commonly known as thrush infections. These can affect the mouth, or if in more severe cases, can go and spread down to the esophagus. So these conditions or fungal infections may be also be associated with other conditions, but in HIV, they may typically be more aggressive, they may not respond to typical treatment, and also they can be atypical in nature. So if you have a patient who's come in, for example, with recurrent candida that doesn't seem to be responding to your typical forms of treatment, maybe in the back of the mind, think about could this patient have HIV and do they need testing for it? So a patient may also have pterosporum folliculitis, and that causes an acne-like inflammation around the hair follicle, and they may also have something called pityriasis versicolor, and that causes hyper or hypopigmented lesions over the skin, as you can see here. Something called seborrheic dermatitis is also associated with HIV, and it's important to be aware of this. So the next infectious skin issue associated with HIV are bacterial infections. These can include things such as Staph aureus, which leads to folliculitis, impetigo, or abscesses. They can also develop mycobacterial infections, or syphilis, ulcers increase HIV transmission. There's also viral associations. These include recurrent or chronic herpes zoster, hyperkeratotic and proliferative viral warts, Importantly, something called oral hairy leukoplakia, and you can see that on screen here. 
Person may also have persistent ulcerated herpes simplex, molluscum contagiosum, as you can see on screen here, cytomegalovirus infection, and also the patient can be affected by things like Norwegian scabies or Demodex folliculitis. So now we've covered some of the infectious skin associations, let's move on and look at the non-infectious subgroup of skin issues associated with HIV, which include cancerous skin lesions. So first of all, the most important one or common one that you may think of is something called Kaposi sarcoma. So prior to widespread treatment with HAART, the AIDS-defining Kaposi sarcoma was the most prevalent malignancy in the HIV population. And that's caused usually by infection with human herpes virus 8. A Kaposi sarcoma typically presents with a painless red-purple lesion and it can affect any part of the body. And it's strongly associated with a declining CD4 count. There's also a two-fold increase of developing squamous cell cancer and basal cell cancers in people with HIV compared to the general population. Cutaneous T and B cell lymphomas are also more prevalent with HIV infection and also things like aggressive melanomas. Finally, people with HIV can develop something called lipodystrophy, as you can see on screen here. So I hope you found the video useful and informative. If you did, please leave a comment in the comment section beneath this video. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for new videos which are released every Wednesday and every Sunday. There's lots more useful links in the description box of this video, so please do check those out if you've got time. And until next time, bye.